Hi there, this is Shuram from Learnacom, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through the first steps of setting up Siemens IoT 2050. IoT 2050 is an internet gateway and is very popular in industrial automation. It basically is a low end PC with Linux Debian operating system. In this video, we will see how we can boot up this module using an example image we are going to download from Siemens website, and then how we can work with this module using a remote access tool, which is Poly Terminal. The easiest way to boot up this module is using a USB key with a burned image. Now I'm going to show you how we can download that image from Siemens website and then burn on a USB key. So first you need to go to Siemens website. Uh, I will put the link in the description. From this page, you can download all the different images and files required for the IoT 2050 and 2040. So first thing first, you need to find out what model and version of IoT 250 you have. IoT 250 comes in different forms and flavors. In a basic version, it comes with a dual core CPU and one gigabyte of RAM. The advanced model has two gigabyte of RAM and a dual core CPU and even a 16 gigabyte of internal storage. The one I have on my desk is the IoT 250 Advance with the hardware series 02. So this uh, image version 1.3 will fit properly. Okay, so I'm now I'm gonna download this file. Keep in mind that to be able to download this file, you need to register on this website and you need to log in with the user and password. Okay. So after downloading the file, I need to burn that image on a USB key. There are many different tools available that you can use. So the one I'm going to use today is called Helena Etcher. It's a very easy tool and it's free of charge. So what I'm going to do is just uh, select the IoT example image and select the target. Please make sure you use a USB version 3. Otherwise, it's going to be really painful later because the uh, USB version 2 is very slow. Flashing the image, it will take only a few minutes. It goes through two rounds of flashing and then validation. Okay, all good. My flash disk is ready. Okay, so next step is to connect our PC to the IoT module and insert the USB stick. So to connect the PC, uh, we need to use port 1 because port 1 comes with the default IP address of 192.168.200.1 and then insert the flash disk into USB slot 2. If you put it in a slot 1, it's not going to boot up with this image. Okay, and then uh, press the reset button to restart the module. And as soon as you see that the uh, stat LED is blinking green, the module is up and running. That may take about 10 to 15 seconds. Now we need to connect to the module. For connecting to the module, I need a remote access tool called PuTTY. You can download PuTTY free of charge from the PuTTY.org. I have already downloaded and installed PuTTY. But prior to that, we need to make sure that the module is reachable from our PC. To check that, you can open the command prompt and try to Ping the module address. If the module responds to the ping request, then everything is good and we can go to the next step and start uh, configuring PuTTY. But if uh, you're not able to see the module, then you may need to align the IP address of your PC with IoT module. To do that, you need to go through the setting of your Ethernet adapter. So just simply type in CPA CPL to get to this page. And then open up the property of the Ethernet adapter you're using. As you may notice, the IP address of my network adapter is not in the range of the IP address of the IoT module. So to fix that, I've added a second IP address to this network adapter using the advanced section. So I added 
The IP address of 192.168.210, the same software mask. So this IP address is in the range of the IP address of the module, which is 200.1. Using this feature, you don't need to change the primary IP address of your network adapter and then mess up with everything else that's working before. Okay, so when we ensure that we can ping the IoT module from our PC, now we can go to Fadi and try to connect to the IoT module through Fadi terminal. So all I need to do, just type in the IP address of the module. And uh, we can give it a name here actually to save it for the next time. So we don't need to type it every time. And then click on the open. We get this message on the first connection. So there's a warning. So we simply accept that. And then we need to log in. The default user password for the first time is root root. And don't get surprised when typing the password because it's not going to display anything. That's how Linux Debian works. Simply make sure that you type in correctly and enter. After the first login, the module asks you to change the password. So first you type in the current password, which is root. And then insert a new password. Again, it doesn't show you when you're typing the password, so you don't get surprised. And there we go. So you will see the prompt root at IoT250 Debian. So that's uh, the window to the Linux operating system on the IoT module. So here you can do anything now. So simply just uh, try some Linux command. Okay, that's all it's needed for the initial commissioning of the IoT250 module. Thanks for watching this video and I appreciate if you share, like and subscribe. Bye bye.